Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. We've got another special request topic today and an excellent multi-part question. So thank you for the question. These are great because I'm always interested in what's coming up for you live. On this series of videos, we're progressing a bit at a time through the text of A Course in Miracles, which will, of course, still be there when we get back. If you have particular questions about A Course in Miracles and or spirituality in general, you're more than welcome to ask and will happily cover them right here. I love these questions for many reasons. Number one is you're benefiting by asking quite a bit, and you're also benefiting people all over the world who may, in fact, have the same question. And to the extent that you have questions, I do definitely want to invite you to ask them. And that is always, always most welcome. And it is certainly a part of spirituality, isn't it? <laughs> it's deep self-inquiry. And yeah, inquiry, for sure. So the question today has many, many parts. And some of the subject matter relates to the atonement as it's discussed and taught here in A Course in Miracles, death and martyrdom. Okay. Atonement, death, and martyrdom. Yeah. The Course has a, a very different definition of atonement than what we think of in the world. And it, quite naturally, A Course in Miracles looks at things very differently than we're trained and conditioned to look at them here in the world. In fact, it aims to turn our perception right side up and to change our mind completely about who we are who our brother is, what the world is and is not. Yeah, a complete perceptual 180. It is only after that complete perceptual 180 that truth can dawn of itself. Truth dawning of itself is enlightenment. That's awakening, realization of God, liberation. It's called many different things here in various spiritual traditions. That does not happen until we learn to see things as they truly are, which we do not. We have it upside down and backwards. So we're invited in this dazed and confused and frustrating state of affairs. Yeah, it's pockmarked by some moments of bliss, beautiful meals and a, a loving hug. Right? It's punctuated by many beautiful moments interspersed in between. Those beautiful moments are moments of doubt, fear, frustration, rage, sadness, sorrow, and yeah, stuff we'd rather not experience. So in this apparent, apparent condition, we're invited to accept what this course refers to as atonement for ourselves. Now here in the world, we think of atonement as getting back at somebody. That is a common thought it, that atonement is we're going to get back at someone or a group of people for what they did to us here in the past. They said this about us, so we're going to atone for that. We're going to get them back. It has a vindictive and 
quite vengeful, wrathful, and hateful connotation. Not surprisingly, a course in miracles invites us to see it completely differently, completely differently. We're invited to accept atonement for ourselves. This is the correction of our inner teacher. We're invited to accept our inner teacher's correction of our perception. We do not see things as they are. We're invited to accept the correction of our inner teacher who will teach us to see them as they are and show us if only we accept this teaching. Central to the atonement is the acknowledgement. And by acknowledgement, we do mean acceptance that the separation never occurred. There is no separation of any kind, and there never has been. We here in the world think we're separate from everyone else, all 8 billion plus screaming humans, yeah, or peaceful humans, or whatever. We think we're separate from our brother. We think we're separate from God. We are not. There is no separation, and there never has been. This is central to our accepting atonement for ourselves. We accept that there never has been any separation. We're still at home in God. Yeah, we appear to be this, but that's not who and what we really are. Which we may deep down acknowledge, and we all do know this, which does not mean at all that we choose to accept it. In fact, you may find yourself in abject denial of everything this course has to say. In fact, that may even take the form of outward hostility. I don't know. It's certainly possible. We have a choice, each and every one of us, and we can run from this as long as we want to. It's our choice. But we have a choice between light or dark. The ego or God, love or fear, yeah? Characterize it however you wish. We have this choice in the present moment. And you could choose not to exercise that, which of course is choosing the ego, it's the same. We can run and deny this as much as we want. You could deny all of this, everything this course has to say for the remainder of this lifetime. And the fact that you're here means that there is a large part of your mind that is attracted to the light and has seen it and you're still watching. That's your inner teacher speaking to you any time. And I do mean any time you're watching this video or any of these videos. Some, when something lands, it, it's the Holy Spirit. It is your inner teacher. You may call your inner teacher whatever you want. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. You may call the Holy Spirit your guide or guides, plural. Makes no difference. Those are all simply names, i.e. labels. When something lands, it's your inner teacher. We're invited to accept atonement. So the question here is let's talk about some everyday examples. Yeah. Accepting atonement for ourselves can be done in many different ways. It can be in the form of a prayer or a statement. 
I accept atonement for myself. I accept atonement for myself. An example would be picking up our cell phone and scrolling our social media. Perfect example. It's sitting right there. I've got it off camera, so I'm not glued to it here. But and perhaps you're watching this video on your device. But let's just use the example of scrolling your social media feed. Inevitably, and sometimes immediately, we see something that disturbs us. Someone expresses an opinion that we manifestly do not agree with, and we rush habitually, almost automatically rush to judgment. An example of accepting atonement, i.e. the correction of our inner teacher, is when you catch yourself judging, to forgive, to catch yourself in the act of condemning someone as ridiculous, stupid, hateful, vile, and wrong, and forgive them and acknowledge that the separation never occurred. This is very important because it does mean that your brother, the person who posted this hate message, is you. There is no separation of any kind. That's one example, is catching yourself in the act and remembering to forgive. Life will dish us all out many such opportunities today. We can absolutely count on that. You may also find as a real-world example that the more you accept atonement for yourself, in fact, the more you state in the mind, of course, that you do, the more peaceful you may feel. Things that once bothered you, like someone's social media post, you may find in time and if you really stick to it, honestly, you will find in time that this stuff that used to bother you no longer hits you the same way. Perhaps you'll notice that you don't rush to judgment. You can still disagree with them, of course, but you don't have to cast dispersion in your mind, labeling them a hateful SOB or worse. You, know, you may find that there's a gap between the stimulus of seeing someone's hateful post on social media and your reaction, which was once knee-jerk and habitual. Noticing that gap is huge because it means this is working. Unequivocally, it means this is working. Keep going. And then part of this question is about death. So yeah, let's, let's talk about that. There's a quote that appears in the question that to live is Christ, to die is gain. Ooh, well, A Course in Miracles would never say that. So, welcome. There is no death. Mm, period. We, we, in fact, do know this to be true. We may choose again, and it is always, always your choice. 
You may choose not to acknowledge this, thinking, of course there's death. This thing doesn't last. Of course it doesn't. Certainly not. We, we live our lives as though it does, and this thing that's 80% water is somehow going to keep its vigor forever. No, it's not. It's highly fallible. And what we all do know, and I invite you to consider, is that you're not a body. There is no death. The Son of God, you, me, all of us, the Son of God is free. There is no death. Who and what we are cannot die. The end of the physical body is simply the end of the physical body. It's a not you. We're, of course, trained and conditioned to think that it is, and to take this fallible device for us, and to take its continued existence for our own continued existence, or shall we say to mistake its continued existence, mistake for our own continued existence. In fact, our life has nothing to do with this at all. It continues unabated with or without 80% water communication device. I'm not saying don't take care of it. If you like to go to the gym and eat healthy, do that, because there are people out there that only you can reach. So if you keep the communication device healthy, that's a good thing. Just know that it isn't the Son of God. It's not you. Give it over to the Holy Spirit is what is suggested that we do here for the purposes of healing the mind and extending love to every living thing. So in this quote, to live is Christ, to die is gain, yeah, no, there is no death. How can that profit you anything? It's not possible. What gain? There is no death. Just put a period, if you prefer. To live is Christ. Christ is the Christ. This, in fact, derives from a Greek word, which means the Son of God. It's the extension of God. And the understanding here is we're all included. This does not simply refer to the historical Jesus, who, of course, is known as Christ. And when people see and read and hear the word Christ, that is almost always the first thing that comes up. And the perception of that is typically limited to just one historical individual who, by the way, teaches us that we're not an individual. The Christ is the Son of God, in which we're all included. Not as individual 8 billion plus units that are separate. No, no, not at all. There is no separation of any kind. We are one. One. That is not some just some pump bumper sticker. It's not just some pipe dream. It's not just something someone says in a, a reggae concert or a yoga class or something like that. It's fact. It's true. And it doesn't appear that way in the world. Enter our spiritual practice. Enter accepting atonement, i.e. the correction of our inner teacher for ourselves. By the way, there is a workbook lesson. It's lesson 163. There is no death. The Son of God is free. Now, I know that you know this deep down, or you would not be here. Doesn't mean you have to agree. We really can't. On the spiritual path, you just can't state that enough. 
This is a self-study curriculum. This is a pixelated image on your screen, by the way, that's not in charge of you. Thank God. Why would I want to be in charge? <laughs> no, thank you, right? There is no separate other of whom to be in charge. Anyway, it's impossible. Now, the last part of this excellent question involves martyrdom. Well, we all know people who are martyrs in the way that we would describe and define that here in the world. In love with guilt, cherishing it. Now, it's not just limited to these people that get off on their own suffering. I mean, perhaps this is you. Perhaps it's someone that you know very well. Almost all of us have some friends or family members that we would put in this category of martyr. In fact, we could all put ourselves in this category, not too flattering, is it? But we're still apparently here having this conversation because we've all cherished guilt. We've wanted to make the unreal separation real. So we've literally created a world, we've fashioned it, we've made it up out of thin air. We've made all of this up so we could continue to play out our guilty fantasy of separation from God and therefore from each other over and over again in different ways with the same result, suffering. And somewhere in this roundabout, a light has come on for you. The light is always there. It's always on. And what has happened is even if it was simply for a fraction of a second, you've caught a glimpse of it and you recognize yourself, capital S, please. Hmm? You recognize the light and you are inevitably drawn to it. We all are. Join the club. Martyrdom in the study and practice of A Course in Miracles is something that we all engage in. So it, again, it's not limited to just someone in your family that wants everybody to feel guilty because they do. <laughs> now, my, uh, my mother was a perfect, perfect example of this in this lifetime, by the way. I'm certain that many of you can relate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all can think of some classic examples, right? But really, it's all of us. We've all cherished guilt and separation, or we would not appear to be here. So we can forgive this. We can let it go. This is a choice. Accepting atonement for ourselves is a choice. Acknowledging that the separation never occurred, which does mean we're at home in God, where we've always been. There is no separation of any kind. God is the only reality. Where are you? Oh, and what are you? Who are you? The thought of God. Perfect oneness. These ideas can be deeply mind-blowing. In fact, you may experience any number of reactions to them, ranging from gleeful, joyful acceptance and relief, as in, oh, I've always known, yes, yes, you have always known, exactly, yes. That's one possibility. Another possibility, and there's a whole apparent 
spectrum in between these is out and out rejection. That's another possibility. Feeling threatened, existentially threatened. And I hope that's not the case, but it could be. And if it is, understand one thing. That is the ego. The ego is threatened. Just by being here, you've got it on the run. Let it run off. Let it go. Any resistance that we encounter to the truth is the ego. It's us, ourselves, wanting to continue to cherish separation, which brings us nothing but pain. Union. Which, of course, cancels separation completely. Light, which just makes darkness disappear. It vanishes. This inclusion, this oneness, continues to attract us more and more. The more you forgive, the more of it you will see everywhere you go, which in turn will spur you on to continue forgiving. There is no separation of any kind. Never has been. All right, so I thank you very much for the question. And again, it, it comes up in many videos that you really do have a choice. Nobody has to believe a single word this course says if you don't want to. Yet what is directly relevant is that, that you're here. You're here today. Something, whether you're aware of it consciously or, or you don't know why, something has called you to be here. And there has been a message or perhaps many more than one message, right? A lot more. There has been at least one message for you from your inner teacher. Only you will know what that is and only you can choose to accept atonement for yourself and to follow the guidance, the correction, the guidance of your inner teacher who will gently and lovingly point out to you your opportunities for forgiveness and will send you the words what's directly relevant to our practice here in the world. And you may find this to be a profound relief is that forgiveness is done in the mind. You don't have to email somebody or call them or text them or sit down for a five and a half hour tear jerking, tell all gut wrenching conversation in person. Forgiveness is done in the mind. So I thank you for this question and invite any other questions that you may have. I'm always interested in what's coming up for you on the path live because my role here is to Turn on the camera and microphone and share the Holy Spirit with you. Just that. As such, it's very important to me that we address what's coming up for you live. So please ask questions if you've got them. If you have not yet subscribed, I would like to invite you to please do that. The prompt's in the corner of your screen. That's the uh, the arrow here. Click that. You'll be invited to subscribe and join us. There are several videos that appear each week. And 
any questions that you may have about A Course in Miracles or spirituality in general are fair game here, okay? So I thank you, as always, for joining me, and I will see you again soon.